Uh, Bree, Jim, would you like me to bring on your first caller? Yeah. And yeah. You, you both, you have call in studio up? Yes. Ask that. Okay, cool. So first time taking a big, Bigfoot caller. I'm pretty excited. Uh, Ronnie, you are on with Jim and Brainbug. How are you? I'm all right. Hello? Hey there, Ronnie. Hey, Ronnie. How's it going? Yeah. Oh, pretty good. How about y'all? Uh, doing good. So what's this about uh, Bigfoot? Did you see him or? Well, you know, that's, I'm, I'm kind of curious why, uh, you know, you would ask, but, uh, you know, you asked me about my experience or whatever, and I'm willing to, uh, I'm willing to share my beliefs or whatever. And, uh, okay. you know, and, uh, you know, keep in mind, I'm straight up atheist and, uh, you know, I'm not given to like whims of belief and things like that. Like uh -huh. uh, I'm telling you what, like physical reality that I experienced. So, so you asked me for this and, uh, I don't mind. Yeah. Let's, let's crack it open. So, let's, uh, let's hear about Bigfoot. Uh, do you actually, do you actually have an encounter? Uh, well, actually, it's not just been one. It's been multiple times over the course of about 30 years or so. You know, it's been multiple times. And uh, Okay. Let's, so so um, uh, give us the, out of these experiences, what was the, uh, what do you think would be the most compelling information for us to have? What would be most interesting and, and provocative uh, of a tale to, to, to tell on that? Well, you know, <clears throat> let me give you a little bit of my background first, okay? I'm a geologist, okay. so I'm very familiar with the outdoors. I spent a lot of time outdoors, okay? I spent a lot of time outdoors. I know the sounds of every animal. You know, even the, I can identify every bird species in, you know, at least Tennessee by the, uh, the call and, uh, you know, I'm very familiar with the outdoors. I've spent most of my time outdoors my whole life. Mm -hmm. I farm and I'm a geologist. <clears throat> That's my background. Okay. Okay. So, uh, you know, sometimes at night I hear it. Right. But, uh, throughout the course of my life, like, uh, there's been several times where I've had a visual contact and, uh, it's never been violent though. It's never been anything violent. And, uh, it's just never uh, been violent, and it's basically just walked away from me. Okay. And when so, you say visual, what 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 do you mean? Well, I mean I've seen it like within twenty feet or whatever. Standing in in the open or in the forest or. Uh, well, <clears throat> yeah, in the forest, like when I was hunting, when I was like, uh, you know, just kind of taking a lunch break in the field. You know, can you, you know, describe it to us? That, can you describe you know, the encounter? I, if I had, if I had to describe it, it would be sort of like, uh, you know, human, like, uh, which is, which is a hominoid, you know, I believe that. And, uh, you know, there's no reason why there's a primate species on every continent. Right. So why would there not be one in North America? But as far as a missing link or whatever, in the terms of evolution, I mean, uh, <clears throat> in terms Actually, of evolution. Okay, go ahead. That? Go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, there's actually a good you. reason to, to to not expect to find a, uh, a, a hominid in in North America or in right. South America, for that matter. Uh, but you know, but I'm well, not. I'm, you know, it kind of looked Native American. It, it kind of looked like Native American in the face, but the animal in like the body. You know what I mean? No. Um, what do you mean, animal in the body? Like the body was an animal, but the face was like a Native American, like a man. You know, like uh, that's why everybody says that they look at the face and they can't shoot it because it looks like a man, but the body was like an animal. You know, it's kind of weird. I don't really know how to explain it to be honest with you. And this is my first time doing this. Okay, I've never did. Right. Like, You're okay. You're like doing that. fine. No, it's fine. You're doing fine. So when you when you say like an animal, do you mean like it had fur on it? Um, it had scales. What 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 made you think that this was an animal? No, it was it was hair, but <clears throat> you know, hair is what 
defines manimal, you know, like it was a manimal. I mean, uh, and that's where the line is gets kind of fuzzy because you can't define between manimal and uh, human, you know, like. Are you saying oh, manimal? You get... Well, yeah, man, man, mammal, you know, like. Oh, that's mammal. Where, that's where you okay. get the thing with. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because, so I mean, where, we are mammals. Uh, well, all, and you th- if, if you think if it, you thought it looked like a like a hominid, yeah, it would definitely be a mammal. Uh, so it was furry, hairy. I mean, hairy. How, how big and, are we talking? Uh, hairy, hairy. What's that? How big are we talking? Yeah, like uh, you know, like nine, ten feet. Nine or ten feet. Oh, that's a big. That's a a, a big animal. Like uh, you know, you don't. You don't you don't mistake something like that that you see in the woods. So okay, like uh you don't do that. Was it standing still looking at you? Was it walking? Uh did you cross yeah, a trail? It, 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 you know what? Every single time it was like it had been watching me and I didn't know it and it just literally just walked away from me like I was never. But you saw it so you saw its human like face. Yep, yeah, but I seen it. You know what? It's just like that Patterson video. Okay. Except for the fact that you didn't know it was there. And you weren't prepared. You didn't have a camera. It just like walked away. Like I was nothing. Like it had been sitting studying me and it just walked away. What kind of That's what kind of forest is it? it? It's Tennessee, so are we are we up in the highlands? The the pines or are we down in the, uh, in the old West Tennessee, West Tennessee, North Mississippi area. West Tennessee, North Mississippi. And you know, my experience is not as dramatic as everybody else, you know, says, but uh, you know, I'm just telling you what happened. I mean. Right. So, uh, I mean, it it seems a little, I mean, we we have nothing in the fossil record um, for a Bigfoot, um, and we only well, have these. Pardon? Let me, let me tell you something, okay? I'm a geologist. I know about the fossil record, and it takes water to preserve fossils. Like, in most of most of the fossils we have are marine related, okay? Right. You know, it takes a certain environment to preserve fossils, and not everything is going to be preserved, okay? So when you're talking about mammal species like uh you know you're in a whole different that's rare fossilization at all is rare okay right but But we 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 have the fossil record for almost every other hominid species it seems odd that we don't have one for for this uh particular species at all um and given the range of places that they've been seen um you know, unless those are relatively new ranges, uh, that, you know, when I say range, I mean area that they, they live in, um, you would still expect something in the fossil record to indicate that a hominid can get to, to nine or 10 feet. Um, in, okay. in, and we don't have, I mean, we just don't have anything, as far as I know, anything in the fossil record that, that indicates that a hominid can get to nine or 10 feet tall. The problem with, okay. with <clears throat> hominids... Uh, let, me, let me ask you this. What's that? So the problem with it being a hominid is that, okay, so most of the the animals that migrated to North America from Asia are steppe animals. They were uh, they lived on the uh, on the the tundra and then up in the the frozen plains a bit. Not a, not a good prime ape habitat. Now, apes like uh, Gigantopithecus, for instance, uh, they get huge. It was a massive massive animal. Uh, but it, it was also indigenous to uh, bamboo forest, and it would have needed that to to stay near bamboo forest in order to uh, to be able to keep itself uh, and enough food to survive. And the cro- crossing the Bering uh, Land Bridge when it was frozen over, it's a, a it's thousands and thousands of miles of trekking. Now, the only hominid that I'm aware of that is built to make that kind of long distance travel as humans and we are we are built to travel uh, all the other apes are kind of uh arboreal they stick to the forest but humans as uh, we have evolved we 
evolved to uh, travel okay. great distances well, across the plane. So that's why we are able to okay, so make that journey. Go ahead. Okay, so let me ask you, let me ask you a question, right? You know about Gigantop- Gigantopithecus, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Gigantopithecus blackie. Mm-hmm. Okay, you know about you know about the Varian land strike? Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. so it was exposed. So that means the environment changed, right? The environment changed. So. Well, that's what I was just you saying. Know, that that land bridge was a tundra. It was an Arctic tundra when it was when it was there. And the animals that crossed over that what land bridge oh, were cursorial oh. tundra animals like wolves and, and elk and humans, uh, our dogs. We brought our dogs with us. Uh, but, uh, yeah, there, there aren't any other you know, hominids you know, that were out there. Go ahead. You're getting you're getting a lot a lot of uh like a evolution of history right now like the short faced bear you know like mm-hmm. uh you know but the if, if the land bridge was exposed that means the environment changed right so you know you had a warm environment and it was not anything different than uh you know what was in Asia and uh, you know animals especially mammals they they move they yeah move. They, yeah. they migrate I mean, sure. I mean, right. we, we have tiger fossils in Alaska because tigers used to be able to go across that land bridge too. Uh, when they, they right. when they got across, there they were trapped there for. I'm sorry, Jim. I keep cutting you off. No, no. I was just I was also going to point out that you're right. They do move, and, and you know uh, we don't have. You know, it's very hard to find credible tracks. Um, of one of these animals or or people or, or hominids. Um, and you know the there's no uh, fur or hair left behind. I mean, it they seem really, really difficult to track, um, even, just for the ones that are alive. So it it, it seem, you know we've got tracks for for uh, animals that, that are fairly rare, but we it just seems really interesting that. Um, we only have eyewitness sightings. The pictures that we have, as far as I know, have been mostly debunked. Um, and with the prevalence of cameras um, all over the place, highway cameras, uh, I mean, they, they catch all kinds of weird stuff. Um, 100 cameras that, that they use for that. Trail cams, uh, yeah. Yeah, trail cams. Don't understand, okay? This is what you don't understand. They have like all those things that you just mentioned, highway cameras, harness cameras. They have caught it. Like they have. I mean, <laughs> all the, everything is out there. Where you know? I mean, where, but as far as my personal experience, what's up? Where where did they catch it on camera? Like a, like something that's actually because I do a, I do a show every Saturday where I talk about talk about different things and caught on camera. And stuff. Internet, I mean. It's all over the internet. They've caught it on traffic cameras. They caught it on trail cameras. Like, uh, you know, as far as my personal experience or whatever, which uh, is what I was going to tell you about, mm-hmm. like it's been, it's not been one, two occasional instances. It's been multiple times. And, uh, you know, I've never really talked about it before. So this is my first time. Yeah. No, you're, and like I said, you're doing, you're doing just fine. Uh, uh, I am uh, interested in asking questions about your personal experience, but um, I am kind of uh, interested in what, what, which uh, videos and, and uh, photos you're talking about as well. I mean, if we're going to claim those, well, evidence, I'd like to. Well, as far as uh, on traffic cameras, there's there's a traffic camera where they caught a whole family on the side of the road in Canada. I mean, that's on the internet. Well, I'm looking at the I'm looking at the claim that the family was captured on Arizona Highway. Yeah, that's the one. I, that's the one. That's probably that's my, well, maybe one of them. But I mean, uh, you know, that's probably one. So, okay, you know, but so I, you find that you find those you're, videos compelling. You're saying that there's no. You're saying that there's no evidence, but you know what you're really telling me is you have not scratched actually out there as far as the evidence. Well, I, I'm I'm looking at this A dot yeah. photo right now. It's Arizona Department of Transportation photo. And I have no idea what I'm looking at. Um, you, I, I mean, you could definitely make the case that these are hominids of some kind, but you could also make the case that they're rocks. Um, you know, or... 
Well, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a still, it's a still video. It's a still, it's a still shot I'm looking at. But again, I could make the case that these are almost anything um, to include people in fursuits. But, uh, okay. So, uh, as far as my personal experience, what did you want to ask me about that? So it was in Tennessee. All your experiences Tennessee, were in Tennessee. Well, I want you to keep in mind something, okay? I'm a, I'm a geologist, and I have traveled quite a bit, like more than an average person. I've done it for a living. Right. I spent time in isolation in many places, and, uh, you know, I spent more time outdoors than the average hunter, okay? Can right. And, like, uh, and here, I mean, has and, anybody uh, else been there and seen it with you, or has this just been you? Absolutely, absolutely. Actually, like, a, you know, one night we were coon hunting uh, in a bottom close to where I live. And, uh, you know, at least five people saw the same thing. Like, it literally walked up on us. But, like, every time, just like I tell you, right? And I won't take my story because I'm not lying, but it walked up on us and uh, it literally walked away like we were nobody, you know? Like, it had literally been studying us and just didn't care. Did it leave any physical we we evidence? Were, we were not a threat, a threat. What's that? Did it leave any physical evidence for you to be able to examine footprints, uh, hair samples, anything like that? Well, of course, footprints, but uh, I mean, we never paid attention to that. You know, we were just like shock, so shocked about it. We didn't. Oh, know, yeah. As far I mean, as hair, we didn't go back to look. At it. What's that? I definitely get being shocked by an encounter like that. How do we, how do we, so it was a group of, you said about five people well, with you and you saw the, you saw the, well, basically, basically it was me and my brother and my dad, okay. my grandpa, one of his, uh, one of his, uh, you know, my, my uncle and his two kids, like we were all out to him. Okay. And, uh, the thing walked up through the, the briars and like a creek or I don't know if you call it a creek or a ditch. It didn't really have water running at the time, but it just walked up through it like it was nothing, you know, all through the bars and everything, and just walked up on us and walked past us, just like we were nothing. And that was just one time now. It's been several times. This is like, you know, I wouldn't call and tell you this stuff for nothing. I mean, no, no, I, and. Times. And we're, we're just trying to figure out what what it was that you saw. And, I mean, I'm looking through the Internet as, you, as you're talking here, and every photo I'm finding, um, first, I really have to commend um, all of the Department of Transportation that, that, have the, that have photos up for having the worst cameras I have ever <laughs> had the displeasure of looking at. Um, wow, are they bad? I don't see how they how they you could use them for any for for anything. But I mean, I I see stuff, and yeah, I go okay, yeah, you can make the claim. Um, it's just really really odd that these are the best that we have. Um, and you, know, you, I, you and this guy is ten foot tall, moving through the uh, the the creek bottoms. Just right. you know, I really can't say uh, ten foot exactly, but I know that it was very intimidating. You know, mm -hmm. it was like bigger than normal. Right. Like I can't tell right. you in exact. And you didn't have your phone with you. Well, some of these times were before they were in cell. Some of these times I'm telling you about were before their cell phones. Okay. Okay. Right. Right. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. So, and. Uh, and, so, uh, you know, when something catches you off guard like that, I mean, you're not going to reach for your phone, okay? That's not your first thought, right? And, uh, you know, like I said, some of the things I'm talking about, cell phones never even existed then, okay? So, so let's You know, I, let's I was look thinking about going hunting, coon hunting one night when I was, uh, you know, like maybe, you're talking about 1983, 4. Okay, so Something let's like let's that. look at some of the 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 wildlife of the of the area and see if there's if there's anything that that fits the uh, the description for you. Um, so, 
Um, Obviously, the the large animals that are that, that live in that area, uh, we're looking to we're talking about bears. You got black bears that in Western Tennessee, uh, not as much as they have. No, more. There was, well, there was actually an experiment where the TWRA tried to introduce black bears back in the eighties, right? So. Mm-hmm. We all knew where they were. Like everybody in the South is not stupid. We knew where they introduced the bears at. You know, they introduced black bears for a very short period of time. Okay. So mm-hmm. basically what you got is black bears. This is the top predator. Right? And, uh, you know, the occasional panther, which nobody believes is here, but to TWRA on their mission. Okay. So basically, you know, the top predator is a bobcat. So I know the sound of every single one of these, and every once in a while at night, it sounds it's nothing like that. It's like a, a, a human, and on the neck, and uh, you know, there's no mistaking what it is. But I know the sound. I can identify any bird that you can name by by the call. Anybody, any of them, passerin, anything. Okay, I have a background in biology and geology, like I told you. I spent a lot of time outdoors. I'm a farmer. Like, I literally live outdoors. Like, that's my whole life. So, there's no, no mistaking when I hear something that's out of the ordinary. Okay. Right. So would you say that most so, of your encounters are auditory? Uh, no, I mean, I've had multiple that were visual. I mean, uh, no, it's not. And I hate to give too much of my background away, but I have very good ex- professional experience, like uh, you know, I'm legit. Oh yeah, no, we're not, we're not out to all... dox you or anything, but yeah, if you have personal, if you have uh, professional training in a field, uh, you know, to be studying. Uh, I have a lot. Yeah. yeah, I have a lot. Like you know, I'm. Uh, you know, University of Memphis graduate, University of Tennessee, with the both of them, like I'm with you. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, I, have no reason, I have no reason to lie to you, and I have no reason to hide anything. You know, yeah. I do believe, I do believe that it's a species that is, uh, you know, this is where the thing comes in, right? Is it endangered or is it elusive, right? Well, it's right, and and even the most elusive animals eventually get, you know, definitively caught on camera. And then we find DNA. Um, I mean, some of the most elusive creatures. Yeah, you know, uh, there aren't that many elusive animals even in the in the ocean. I mean, we do find a few, and that's much harder to find. Um, and and we still find those, and we find evidence for them. Someone well, asked the in the chat right? here what Bigfoot sounds like. Did, could you could you do a Bigfoot impression for us, or is that in in your wheelhouse? I can't really I can't really impersonate it, but I can tell you this: it, it's 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 a call that is unmistakable. And the thing about it is, right, is you only hear it one time; it won't repeat. You'll only do it once. It won't repeat unless it's like two or three hours later. It only does it once. It won't repeat it. It doesn't repeat like a, a regular animal will. You know, there's intelligence behind that, right? <clears throat> so it won't do it like repeatedly. It just does it once, like an isolated call, and then it won't do it again. But when Could you hear it, it's like there's it? no mistake in it. Could someone train What's their that? voice? To, could someone train their voice to do it though, like with practice? No, it's too loud. It's, it's too loud and it's too far off. It's no mistake in it. There's no mistake in it. Absolutely not. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it. it if lots of things come to mind, uh, but you know the area, so, I mean, I would assume that you've eliminated uh, wind through caves and all that kind of of stuff, um, because one one of the other things that that's odd is... Yeah. Pardon? Go ahead. I'm in a Delta. There's nothing like that here. I'm in a Delta. Okay. Yeah, I, I, like I said, I, I assume that you, you'd eliminated that, so... Um, and because it's also odd that the, when you start looking into this stuff, um, everybody, it, there's there's no consistent description of the sound. 
um, unless it, it, it's a, a, a vague one like yours, you'll know it when you hear it type of, of description. Other than that, there's, there's no good description or consistent description of the sound. Um, yeah. That's, uh, you know, how do I, I'm let me try to describe it the best way that I can, right? It's like a mix between a human and an animal. And it's so loud that you know you know that it's far away, but you know that it's not normal. It's not a normal animal that you're used have, to. Have you ever heard a cougar That's, scream? Absolutely. You know, TWRA just now admitted that cougars existed in Tennessee because somebody shot one with a bow and arrow uh, mm -hmm. you know, in middle Tennessee. And I just now admit that they were here, but I've seen them my whole life, even since I was a kid. Like, they've always been around. Like, there's nothing oh, yeah. in it. Okay. Well, there was, before, uh, another subject. Western, before Western Expansion, uh, the, there was a, a subspecies of cougar called the Eastern Cougar that was actually indigenous to Tennessee. I, I believe that well, they think the ones that are coming over now are, are invasive from the West. Well, but, you know. I've got I've got my own theories theories on that. I believe that the panther that was is seen in the east past the Mississippi River is the Florida panther. Okay, as far as the mountain lines and everything like that, that goes on like in Arkansas or whatever like that. You know, it takes a lot to cross the Mississippi River, and uh, you know, I believe the panther that's seen in the eastern United States is the Florida panther migrating upwards. So that's my thoughts on that. But Florida Short panthers breeze. are a bit smaller, though, uh, than than the eastern cougar was. But Where there used to be a subspecies called the eastern mm -hmm. cougar. Really? They, they declared them extinct, I think it was in 2011. Uh, but I I, they, there may still be some pockets out yeah. there of them. I, I, I don't know. Um, I think that that would be more likely than, the, than, than a Florida panther because the Florida panthers... Uh, it's sort of uh, adapted well, to living in, in that true. specific environment. Well, my, my, two, my two ideas on that, my two ideas on that is that it never went extinct and it rebounded, mm -hmm. or the Florida panther that's native moved up, you know. And uh, you know, as far as the uh, mountain lion or whatever they say that's out here, I don't believe it's a mountain lion at all, you know. Which has been caught on camera, like you say, right? You wanted evidence caught on wildlife camera. It, it has been. Right. I mean. Uh, <clears throat> All the evidence is out there. It's just, uh, you know, people want to pick and choose, like, uh, you know, what they want to accept. But, uh, you know, it's just, uh, you know, basically, you know, you got to, got to, you got to decide between personal experience or, you know, belief. And belief is something that you've never experienced. But when you see something, you experience it. It's not a belief anymore. It sounds like you've had lots of experiences that we could really dig into. Um, it's been really nice listening to your uh, to your information that you have for us, and I do encourage you to give us a call back uh, in the future with with uh, more of this. If if you give us uh, accounts, that's that's what I'm really looking for. Is like okay, we were it was this time of night, we were in this location. I can, I can tell you, mm -hmm. yeah, I can I can tell you several things that's happened to me. I mean. Yeah. Oh, well, definitely. Uh, uh, do uh, do consider giving us a call back because this has been really enjoyable for me. I, I really love this topic. So uh, anytime that I'm that I'm hosting, I welcome you to call in uh, because yeah, I, I really enjoy talking about this. We do have a call, other callers waiting though, so we gotta we gotta kind of move forward. But uh, did you want to have a, anything? Any last what words? Can we... What can I listen to this at? Uh, we're on YouTube uh, at the uh, the YFNA, uh, but if you message Ian or Ian Ethan, he will he'll send you some links. Okay, and I would like to communicate with okay. you about some of these pictures and stuff that you're talking about that you find compelling because I'd like to look them over and have a have a discussion about them maybe. Uh, but anyway, until next time, uh, uh, it's been nice talking to you. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Thank you very much. All right, Ronnie, you. you take care. Bye-bye. All right. Thanks a lot. <clears throat> All right, Jim. Uh, huh? What you, would you think of that? Uh, it, it's it's interesting that, you know, like I said, the, the uh, highway cameras, I, you'd think in 2022 would be better. Um, at least in the 2000 would be better. But they're really, really low res, and that doesn't do you any good. Um 
the the couple of high res stuff taken on a modern phone or more modern phone um, looks interesting, but there's just not enough detail on them, even on the high res, to to really see exactly what it is that you're you're looking at. It could still be a, a someone in a, a gorilla suit. Um, it could be somebody in a, a fursuit suit of some kind. Still, Here's I don't know. Hind legs. Yeah, it's just it, it's it's kind of interesting. Um, there are still a lot of sightings. Um, I was looking uh, at sightings over time, thinking that with more modern cameras, we get fewer sightings. But the number of sightings has actually gone up. Um, but not the number of pictures, which again yeah. is interesting. It's. Uh, that's why it makes the whole thing so frustrating is that when you start looking for evidence outside of personal experience, what you end up with is um, a, a bunch of nothing. There's, there's, we've got a one mandible um, um, from in, that was in China, but no idea. Really, it, it it's hominid, but other than that, we don't know anything about it. Well, that's what I was going to get into there, too, was that the ecology of the Gigantopithecus wouldn't have allowed it to traverse the the Bering Land Bridge. It just it just wouldn't have been able to make that journey uh, based on its, uh, what we can understand of its anatomy and its habitat that it lived in. It wouldn't have been traveling across open tundra. <laughs> Right. And so it just it's really, really interesting at just how camera shy this is, you know, this creature is. Um, you would expect to see, you know, to find hair, um, something leaving behind tracks um, and, and yeah, feces and none of it. And what you do find is that it's not consistent. So what can you really, really say? Um, yeah. You know, and there's lots. There may be some good reason to uh, for that why it's not consistent. Maybe you know um, because of time between you know from when the the track was left, et cetera. But still, I mean, there's I more questions. To in Bigfoot for most of my 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 life, well, growing up and stuff. I, I really wanted Bigfoot to be real, but just the evidence doesn't pan out. If you look at it as a collectively, it just doesn't pan out. Was that your first Bigfoot call you've ever taken? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, and it, like I said, it was interesting. It was his personal experience, and I, you know, the only thing I can say is not everybody interprets the same experience the same way. Um, so I'm not sure that if if I had that same similar experience, that I would necessarily call it a Bigfoot. Um, I might call it a, you know, just pareidolia or something else. Something anomalous. Um, yeah. Yeah. So. All right. So. Uh, before we move on to anything, we got some awesome, awesome people in the live chat. I want to give a shout out yeah. to because they dropped some uh, some hella super chats. Uh, I got cookies. Gave us twenty bucks. First time here. Hey, thanks. Uh, gotta pay some respects. First time here. We're glad you're here. We got uh, Stellette Larray. Uh, it definitely improves my year to find that YFNA and the perspective. While I am a strong believer in the soul, I love open and kind dialogue wishing everyone involved a great 2022 we're wishing you a great 2022 as well and our old friend amit matthew uh dropping 20 bucks in there as well thank you for helping me find community over the last year i met so many great people through this show and i love joining all these wonderful folks in the chat every week wishing everyone a wonderful 2022 Yes, thank you so much. You people are so generous, and uh, you keep this show going. You you keep us wanting to come back and, and take these calls and talk to these folks. So we appreciate you. And if anybody out there in the in the live chat, if you have an experience, it doesn't have to be Bigfoot. <laughs> it doesn't have to be uh, aliens. But if you have some kind of unexplained experience that you want to share with us, we're open to just talk about it. Yeah, give us a call. We'd love uh, to hear these uh, these accounts. Yeah. 